Good morning, everybody. This is Mani Itirajan. My topic is related impurities assessment considerations for APIs and generic complex peptide products. So most of the DMFs, we observe a lack of information regarding the related substances and their qualifications. And that led to several back and forth communications between the applicants and us. To address this issue, uh, I will briefly tell you what our current thinking and recommendations are. Before we move on to our main topic, I'm going to show a couple of slides from the OPQ, which is mandatory. Coming back to our objectives, I'm going to describe the components that are required to demonstrate AP sameness for peptides with respect to drug master file. You will come to know the common deficiency and the importance of the impurity compatibility studies in DML. So I'm going to list a few compatibility study scenarios at the end. Please remember this presentation is meant for DMF uh, applicants and it is not relevant for the AND applicants. Okay, this slide covers the terminology for peptides with respect to the FDNC Act. Mindy already covered this uh, section, so I'm not going to go into details. So I'm going to go to the next slide. This slide contains the examples of therapeutic peptides. I'm not going to go through it. It is self-explanatory. So we will move on to the next slide. What about regulatory guidances? We all know in the case of uh, non-peptide small molecule drugs, you can utilize ICH, FDA guidances, USP monographs to establish their APA sameness as well as you can qualify your uh, specified impurities. But in the case of peptides, not many guidances are available. There is no FDA general peptide guidance. However, we have a draft guidance for industry. It is only applicable for synthetic peptide drug products that refer to listed drugs of RDNA origin. For example, liraglutide, glucogon, neseritide, teriparatide, and teriglutide comes under that category. We also have a product-specific guidance for latirumor acetate and semaglutide. In the case of semaglutide, it basically refers to that, uh, uh, the above draft guidance. Please remember there is a European general Pharmaceutical European General Monograph 2034 is available, but it is not formally recognized by FDA. Again, I insist, it is not formally recognized by the FDA. In the next couple of tooths, uh, couple of slides, I'm going to explain briefly about our draft guidance for industry. This draft guidance and as for certain highly purified synthetic peptide drug products that refer to listed drugs of RDNA origin, describes FDA recommendations for establishing the APA sameness, as well as how to qualify the related impurities in your generic peptide product. In the case of active ingredient sameness, the DAPT recommends you to submit a primary sequence of your uh, drug substance as well as physical chemical properties of your drug substance. You can provide a complete characterization of a primary sequence of your uh, proposed drug substance and relevant physical chemical properties of the drug substance. You can also provide a secondary and the higher order structures of your drug product. They also recommend you to provide a 
oligoma or aggregation states of the drug product. And you are also recommended to provide biological activities if needed. Remember the primary sequence and physical chemical properties of drug substance is needed in the DMF. In the DMF, we require only the primary sequence and physical chemical properties of the drug substance. We, need, we do not require drug product information like a higher order structures or aggregation or oligomer states or any biological activities. For the related impurities, this guidance recommends the applicant to do the impurity profile compatibility studies with the RLD. Once you've done the compatibility studies, you may propose the limits for your impurities, related impurities based on your studies. For example, if you observe impurities that are common between your drug substance and the RLD, you can propose the acceptance criteria, not more than those observed in the RLD. For any new impurities in your drug substance, your limit should not exceed 0.50%. Further, each of these new impurities present at 0.10% or greater should be identified unjustified for not affecting the safety and the efficacy of the product. For the drug product, you need to justify your safety risk, including the immunogenicity risk. In the following seminar, uh, Eric will talk about how to address the immunogenicity issue. The guidance also recommends the you to utilize sensitive and high resolution analytical methods to detect and characterize peptide related impurities. Now we switch our attention to the DMF and what are the expectations in the DMF with respect to APA sameness and related impurities. We want you to provide your complete uh, characterization of the drug substance our comparative structural signature analysis of drug substance with the RLD. We also want you to provide a comparative physical chemical properties of your drug substance, especially spectroscopic analysis and other physical properties. And we also want you to provide a comparative impurity profile analysis with the RLD. So our approach is a basically a totality of evidence approach. Please remember in the DMF, we expect this information, whether the corresponding RLD is derived from chemical synthesis or RDNA synthesis. Again, if your APA is prepared by the chemical synthesis, uh, doesn't matter the RLD is derived from chemical synthesis or or DNA derived. Due to time constraint, uh, my rest of the talk mainly will be focused on related impurities with respect to DMF. When you talk about related impurities, differences in manufacturing process may result in a differences in the related impurities. For example, if you're using chemical synthesis as your APA manufacturing process, your related impurities may be altered based on your starting materials, reagent, catalyst, solvents involved in the process. Sometimes intermediates as part of your related impurities and byproducts due to the process would be your related impurities. And of course, a degradation products due to these uh, materials also part of uh, your related impurities. But in the case of RICA, if the recombinant synthesis process, your related impurities will be different from the chemical synthesis process. Here in the recombinant process, you may expect uh, byproducts of fermentation, cell culture, media components, 
residual DNA and cellular proteins can alter your uh, related substances. Bacteria, fungi, and mycoplasma viruses present in the process will also alter your uh, related impurities. And of course, column materials will also alter your related impurities. And due to these uh, materials, you may get a different degradation products. In the DMF, almost all the EAPA processes are involves solid phase peptide synthesis. So due to time constraint, I'm not going to go into details of the process. However, we will discuss the impurities generated due to this process in the next slide. In this slide, uh, we will see the potential related impurities due to the solid phase peptide synthesis process. You may get several side products. For example, you may get related impurities due to proteolysis. Sometimes you may get a deamidation product, or sometimes you may get a oxidation of methionine sulfur to sulfoxide is sulfone may lead to a related impurity or you may get related impurities due to reduction, resumization, deletion, truncation, insertion, and sometimes you may get incomplete deprotected product and sometimes you may get disulfidic chain product or you may get uh, acetylated uh, products. And also you get uh, impurities due to storage. As I mentioned in my previous slide, both the guidance for the industry is insisting you to do the impurity compatibility study. So when you do the impurity compatibility studies, please uh, follow the following recommendations. When you conduct a comparative impurity profiling, please make sure to demonstrate that the impurity is common to both the proposed acceptance and the RLD are present in the proposed acceptance at the same or lower levels than in the RLD. Analyze and characterize new impurities in the proposed acceptance that are not common to the RLD. Conduct a study on a statistically meaningful number of batches and also use the drug substances on or near release and at the end of the proposed shelf life. In the case of RLD batches, please use at different ages of the batches and of course prior to expiry. But finally, we recommend you to use a multiple orthogonal validated methods when you characterize and analyze the new impurities as well as the common impurities. As just mentioned, when you analyze your uh, related impurities, please use uh, complementary analytical methods. There are several complementary analytical methods are available, especially related impurities such as a deletion, insertion, truncation, proteolysis, substitution, functional group modification, disulfide modification, deamidation, acylation of uh, amino functions in your peptide. See all these related impurities you can utilize LC HRMS. In some cases you can utilize LC MSMS to analyze your uh, your related impurities. I also recommend you to look at this paper, Zeng et al. from uh, FDA. They have published a very good paper on uh, analyzing the peptides using the orthogonal analytical methods. In the next three slides, you're going to, we are going to talk about three main scenarios. In the current scenario number one, you can see both the generic as well as RLD observed 
all the common impurities, but in the RL, the impurity A observed 0 0.50, but your proposed generic level is uh, not more than 1.0%. This is not acceptable. If the common impurity A is higher than the RLD, you propose to control it at the same or lower levels than in the RLD. So always remember limits of the common impurities less than or equal to RLD impurity levels. In the scenario number two, you see you in the generic drug substances, you observe the new impurity and you propose 0.40%. Proper justification, we may accept this in the DMF. Remember, any new impurities uh, less than or equal to 0 0.50 with the proper justification may be, may be acceptable in the DMF. However, additional data to qualify impurity may be requested from an and applicant referent in this DMF. So in that case, you need to Oh, reduce the or tighten the limits based on the ANDA applicant request. In scenario three, you notice the any unspecified impurity he proposed at not more than 0 0.10, even though the RLD is at 0.40%. We strongly recommend you any unspecified impurity in your drug substances to be controlled at the level of 0.10% or based on you know, MMD, MDD of your uh, drug product or else justification should be provided. This general approach may be considered when developing other peptide APA products as well. So what happens if you provide insufficient information regarding to related impurities? you will get a big deficiency. I'm not going to go through the deficiency language here, but just I wanted to mention in the point B, if any general, in general, any new impurity is not common to RLD that are present in your proposed exceptions at the level above 0.10% should be identified and reported by RRT, and their limit should be justified. So in the DMF justification, maybe risk analysis data for that impurity or safety mitigation data are based on manufacturing capability or any literature data or statistical analysis, particularly that impurity, or you can compare the existing specifications and you can justify based on that. Okay, now I'll move on to challenge. Question number one, which one of the following amino acid polymers is considered by the FDA to be regulated as a peptide drug under the FDNC Act? A, amino acid polymer contains less than 100 and more than 40 amino acids. B, amino acid polymer contains equal or less than 40 amino acids. C, amino acid polymer contains greater than 100 amino acids. D, amino acid polymer with the size of more than 15,000 Dalton. The answer is B, the amino acid polymer contains equal or greater than 40 amino acids. Okay, challenge question number two. Which one of the following is not considered to be synthetic peptide related impurities? A, amino acid insertion impurities. B, amino acid deletion impurities. C, residual DNA and cellular protein impurities. D, incomplete deposition impurities. A, the answer is C, residual DNA and cellular protein impurities. Finally, summarize my presentation by insisting that impurity profile compatibility studies on the proposed peptide drug substance with RLD is always a key part in qualifying related impurities in the peptide API. And please be aware each peptide API has its own challenges 
DMF applicants need to evaluate individual situation and apply these recommendations accordingly. Finally, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to send this. We will answer in the question answer section. Thank you.